Over the course of these next few videos, we'll focus on transitioning you into Mari to work on your textures. In this first video, we'll learn how to create a project to work in for both UV and P-Text based texturing. Alright, so if this is your first time launching Mari, you're probably looking at a screen very, very similar to the one that I have here. Now, I do have several uh, little small image previews here that likely you do not have on your machine. So, these are called projects, and these are all previous projects that I've been working on inside of my copy of Mari. Now, the way that Mari functions is that we're going to take everything we need to create textures for an asset, whether it be geometry to paint on, whether it be uh, actual images to use for maybe uh, projection purposes, whatever the case may be, all of that comes into uh, something called a project, and that's where everything is stored for a particular asset. So let me go ahead and show you the geometry that I'm going to use to create a project here. Now this will be inside your project files. I'm going to go ahead and just pop this over here. And inside your project files, if you look inside this other files folder, you'll notice here that we have three folders and you'll want to look inside of geometry. Now here I have a number of different OBJ files. Uh, and you can see basically the OBJs that live here for the most part correlate directly with subtools for the asset that we worked with in the previous module. So you can see there's something for the body, for the ground, the eyes, the pants, the teeth. Now this is one we will not be using for our project here inside of Mari as this was the one that Justin showed you how to bring in a UV layout from another application in the last module. So um, let me go ahead and just minimize this window here and show you how to create your first project. There's three places you can do that. You could actually come over here and click this new button here. Uh, you can come up here to this toolbar and click this little piece of paper icon here. Uh, or you can just come to the file menu and select new. So I'll go ahead and do that and the new project dialog comes up. The first thing you should do is go ahead and give your project a name. I'm going to call mine W Wolf. There we go. And I'm going to come over here to the path right here, and I'm going to point Mari at the OBJs that I want to use. So we'll go ahead and click on that button there, and you can see I've already browsed to that geometry folder that I just showed you. So uh, what we can do here is we can actually load in a single OBJ or we can load in multiple OBJs at the time the project is created. Now notice down here OBJs aren't the only file type we can use. We could use something like an Alembic file or an FBX or even a PTEX file. But coming out of ZBrush more than likely you're going to be working with OBJ files. So let's go ahead and hold down our control key and click on the body the eyes, the pants, and the teeth. Now we're going to skip over the ground and of course this Wolf Low UV for the time being. So let's select Open and you'll see that a path gets loaded here for each of those OBJs. Now we can add additional ones at this point. We could remove some if we need to. Uh, but I'm going to move down here to the Mesh Options portion of this dialog. So uh, all of the OBJs that I've selected here, all four of these, uh, they correlate to subtools in terms of the ZBrush asset, but uh, more so they actually all have a UV layout. Now I've done that uh, just to kind of separate UV and PTEX for the time being, uh, but I'll show you more about PTEX here in just a moment. Now at the time of project creation, we could choose to disregard the UV layout on these if we wanted to use PTEX. All we would need to do is come down here to Mapping Scheme and actually come down and choose Force PTEX. But again, I don't want to do that. I want to use UV, so we'll leave UV if available, PTEX otherwise selected here. Okay, so next we have Selection Sets. Uh, we're actually going to leave Selection Sets and Multiple Geometries per Object set to their default settings here. Now below that in this texture portion of the dialog, we have a couple of different areas. Kind of at the top here we have this root path. That's really not going to pertain to this particular example because that is something you can use if you know that the asset you're loading up already has textures that have been created for it in Mari. So we could actually scan a location for those textures. 
Down below that, you'll see a number of different types of channels. Now, inside of Mari, a channel is something that can store texture. And we can create multiple channels inside of our projects. So we could have a channel for something like specular weight. We could have a channel for diffuse color. We could have a channel for bump map. Uh, we could have a number of different channels devoted to each one of these types of data. We can actually create some channels at the time the project is created. If we want something like a dirt channel or a dirt mask or uh, displacement, something like that. Um, and you see some options here. You have things like the size of the channel, the resolution, uh, color space, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not going to create any of these, but we could just check this create box here if we wanted to create, say, a dirt channel. Okay, great. Now, Lastly, before we click OK, I want to point out this little inconspicuous little rollout right here. Uh, this is something that likely you would miss, um, but you can actually click on that and expand uh, this to reveal a lot of different color space options. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into color space, but um, just understand that Mari, ha it, it works with something called a linear workflow, whereas uh, everything we're doing in Mari is done in a linear space. Um, but we're using a view transform to convert that linear data into something that looks correct on our monitor. And then, of course, that same color space, say sRGB, is baked into our textures if we're outputting uh, low dynamic range 8-bit images. Okay, so um, I would recommend staying away from these unless, of course, you're working as part of a studio that is using an open color I.O. pipeline, in which case you can actually load in that configuration file here for your project. We'll go ahead and collapse that and click OK. Now, this is going to take Mari a moment to actually create my project. Uh, it's probably a good idea for me to point out to you at this point that each one of those OBJs that I told it to import in, they're actually the highest subdivision level for each of those subtools. So we've got really dense meshes that Mari is processing right now. So it may take Mari a little bit of time to actually create its project here. Now, once Mari has finished creating our project, you should see something that looks like this. Now, fair warning, if uh, your computer is not the equivalent of mine, uh, then you may have a little bit more trouble working with these OBJs that I've supplied you with. Mari works completely on your computer's graphics card. And the gra graphics card that I have in this particular machine right now is a pretty hefty card. So you may find it necessary, if you struggle with things like lag inside of Mari's viewport, you may find it necessary to actually go into ZBrush and use a lower subdivision level, or one of the methods that Justin showed you in the previous module to reduce the number of faces for your subtools. Then you could use something like a normal map to capture the higher le uh, levels of detail inside of Mari. But uh, again, Mari really does excel at high resolution texture painting. So I've gone ahead and brought in these highest subdivision levels for you. Now, again, we have brought in all of these guys based on the fact that they have a UV layout. So let's do this. Let's come up here to the view menu and let's go to palettes. And I'm going to open up the objects palette. And you can see that it pops open right over here. You can see there are objects inside of my Mari project for each of those subtools. One for the body, one for the eyes, pants, and the teeth. Now, when you're working with a multi-object asset like this one, um, you'll need to make sure that you have the correct object selected here that you want to work on. So I have the body selected right now, um, but we could either select it here inside the objects palette if we wanted to work on something like the pants or we could hold down the I key on our keyboard. This brings up Mari's channels pop up and you can see the far left column, we can actually switch over and select something like the pants. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and just run across the top here. We'll talk more about the UI here in just a moment, but I wanna show you that the pants, if we come over and click on this UV tab, actually have a UV layout for them. If we look here at the teeth, Again, we have a UV layout. And again, with the eyes, a UV layout. 
Now the body is the one that uses a multi-tile layout, so you can see how that displays here inside of Mari. We have the very three uh, different UV layouts that make up this multi-tile layout. Now inside of Mari, these are referred to as patches. So this particular object has three texture patches. We'll get into that more in just a bit. Now to wrap this video up, I wanted to show you how we can bring in an additional object. And in the case of this asset, I'm going to bring in kind of the ground geometry. Now fair warning, the ground geometry does not have a UV layout, um, but we can bring it in and use P-Tex so that we can apply per-face textures to that particular mesh. Over here in our objects palette, let's click on this button right here, and that will give us the option to add in an object. I'll simply select my ground object here, and I'm going to hit open. We get this small menu here, it looks a little different, but again, it's got our mapping scheme, our selection sets, and multiple geometries per object. Now, for this one, we can leave it set to UV if available, or we can just come over and choose to force PTEX. If I say UV if available, PTEX otherwise, for a piece of geometry that does not have UVs, it's going to revert to PTEX anyways as we'll see here in just a moment, as soon as Mari finishes processing that piece of geometry. Now again, it is a pretty dense mesh, so it may take Mari just a moment, but we should see another dialog pop up on screen here. And there we go. There is our PTEX import or creation for the ground OBJ. Now this top portion relates to if we have a PTEX file that has textures and we want to use, we could browse to it here. That's not going to pertain to this particular object. So down here, uh, we have some important decisions to make in terms of how we're going to set up PTEX inside of Mari. So the first option we'll need to pay attention to is this auto size option. Now mine is currently set to uniform face size. This will be good if all of the faces for the mesh you're bringing in are very similar in size because basically what we're going to do is we're going to assign one specific resolution to each and every face. In this case, a 4x4 pixel grid for each, each face on the object. Now, this is the one I'll be using for this ground geometry, but we do have another option here called world space density. World space density is extremely beneficial if you have varying face sizes um, that where your faces basically aren't even close together in terms of size. So you'll want to use this world space density. And what this does is it assigns resolution based on units of world space. And you can see right now the texel density uh, is set to a value of 16 by default per unit of world space. So again, this is not one that I'm going to use, but again, this is available to you depending on the mesh you're bringing in and what the faces are in terms of uh, size. So I'm going to leave this set to uniform face size and we'll leave it set to per face texture size of 4x4 four four, and we'll go ahead and click OK here. Now again, Mari is going to bring in a fifth object into our objects palette and it's actually going to set up the PTEX for us for that particular object. Now you can see the process right down here in the lower right corner of Mari actually processing that geometry. Um, depending on the size of the geometry, it may take a little longer to process, but uh, you can see Mari is almost finished. So we'll go ahead and wait for it to wrap up. And it looks like it's going through another step. Let me go ahead and pause the video while Mari finishes up here. All right, great. So it looks like Mari finished processing that geometry and it has brought in yet a fifth object into our objects palette. You can see for the ground here. Now, one important thing to note, being that this is a PTEX piece of geometry, is that we don't have access to that UV tab. It's actually grayed out for this particular object. But if we wanted to work with one of the other objects, you'll see that it does come back for us. All right, great. So in this video, we've learned how to create Mari projects for both UV-based textures and PTEX textures.